to one. Let's talk about the concept of perfusion. Perfusion is one of the largest modules in our pharmacology course. You probably noticed that when you saw the number of chapters that are involved and the number of drugs involved. But it's going to be very, very important as you learn these drugs to learn them within the concept of perfusion. If you don't do that, you will struggle. You must overlay all of this on top of perfusion. And remember, there are times when we may want to curtail or from a stop perfusion, but those are very rare. That's like if you have an arterial bleed and you're putting a tourniquet on or something along those lines. When it comes to pharmacology, we are almost always promoting perfusion. So think about all those drugs. They all have a similar goal, and that is to promote perfusion of blood throughout the body. So they're all gonna do that as their endpoint, but how they do it differs. And the heart is our central part of perfusion. So we'll start there. If you need a refresher uh, from your pathophysiology class or even your anatomy class, now is the time to look back at those notes or to go into your Jarvis textbook in your online resources and find the video clips of um, uh, perfusion. I'm sorry about that. Let's get it back up here. There we go. I'm going to see our heartbeat again, probably. Yeah, there we go. So what happens is, is our heart pumps and it pumps this huge, um, like think of it as when you go on a cruise, not a little boat that you would just take out into the bay, but a huge cruise ship that has lots of oxygen and nutrients in it. And it floats along and goes out to all these areas. You see all the different um, areas of the body, the brain, the periphery, the lower extremities, the kidneys, the uh, liver, the abdomen. So the blood carries oxygen and nutrients to all these areas. In those areas, in the capillaries, it undergoes the oxygen and CO2 exchange. And then it, the blood goes from being in arteries to being in veins. And now it comes back, it's not red, right? It's blue because it has CO2 now and it's carrying that back to the heart so that it can be pumped into the lungs where it gets oxygen rich again, comes back out and will go and travel back through the body. And that's basically perfusion. So all the drugs we're gonna talk about work somewhere along this pathway. Either it works to strengthen the heart itself, the main pump, or it works to make the big cruise ships better or it re decreases resistance in the uh, peripheral uh, uh, circulation um, or somewhere along that pathway. So let's look at what happens when perfusion is not as it should be. So now we have perfusion here. Look at how fast that heart was beating. It was beating very fast because now it's saying, wait, 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 oh, we need more oxygen. The body is the, it's sending out these cruise ships with lots and lots of stuff. But here, in all the places where it has to go, there's a, either occlusion because of lipid buildup, which means we're going to need to put in our anti-lipid drugs like atorvastatin, or it's narrowed from vascular constriction, like from hypertension. And so the ships are all backing up, and the oxygen and nutrients are not getting exchanged at the rate they should. So now we don't have quite as much coming back and the heart is trying to put out all this, but it's actually causing a problem. So look at where you might need to fix the problem here. And it's gonna be like where this backup is and where you see the perfusion issues. That's gonna be a big place. Plus your pale heart here, maybe the pump could be more effective and still get these cruise ships out, but we would probably have to work in both areas so that the circulation is open to accepting the flow and the heart is able to pump enough to get into the circulation. So when we come down to pharmacologic management of perfusion, these are the drugs or the classes of drugs that we're gonna focus on. Remember we have cardiac glycosides like nitroglycerin. We have digoxin, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. We have our statin drugs like atorvastatin, our ACE inhibitors like lisinopril and allopril, our ARBs like losartan. You have to ask yourself and learn two, two ways of thinking about, about these drugs when it comes to pharmacologic management. 
The first thing for all of these drugs and classes is the patho connection. What effect does digoxin have, for example, um, on the process of perfusion? What effect does a beta blocker like metoprolol have on the process of perfusion? So you have to think about your pathophysiology for every drug. Well, where does a beta blocker exert its effects? Where does an ACE inhibitor exert its effects? The beta blocker is going to exert its effects in a different place than an ACE inhibitor. So you wanna understand that behind the pathophys, that's their mechanism of action. And then how does where they and how they exert their effects lead to possibility of adverse effects? Because if something's a massive vasodilator, that's great, all those little shifts can start moving and, and what? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to our ship picture here. So if you use a massive vasodilator, you can open up this blockade on the right-hand side and all these ships can come through. And now the heart can relax. Oh, I'm not pushing against pressure, no pressure anymore. Everything's getting perfusion, but it leads to an adverse effect that could be high, uh, orthostatic hypotension. So think about those types of uh, effects. Let's see if we can get it to change. There we go. How do these effects lead to adverse effects? So on the right hand side is the other hand. You've got the patho connections and then nursing considerations. If you can help, if you start to understand how the pathophysiology of perfusion works and how things can stop perfusion, so we have drugs that will work in certain ways to promote perfusion, you will lead to your nursing considerations. So what alterations are treated? Well, hyperlipidemia and the buildup of lipids in our arteries is treated with a statin drug. And that is perfusion. It, those things block perfusion. So we try to remove the lipids so that we can promote perfusion. Perhaps we are using um, an ACE inhibitor that will block some of the reuptake of fluid in um, the renin system. So that that helps to reduce the amount of pressure against which the heart has to pump. So you have to think about what is the reason I'm gonna use these drugs? What is the alteration of perfusion that makes me need to use one of these drugs? So what's the expected therapeutic effect? Well, with a atorvastatin, the therapeutic effect is reduced cholesterol and triglycerides. We want to see in our labs that those levels are coming down. That's really the therapeutic effect. The side benefit is then usually a reduction in hypertension, reduction in blood pressure, and hopefully then um, a reduction of overall issues with perfusion. But then let's say we give nitroglycerin. What is it that we expect, we expect to happen when we give nitroglycerin? What is supposed to happen? And you will know that if you understand the effect nitroglycerin has on perfusion and that you understand what alteration in perfusion causes us to want to use nitroglycerin. Then you start to ask yourself, well, what are the dangerous or potentially life-threatening effects of these drugs? And that leads you right back over to the patho where we said, how does this effect lead to an adverse effect? So what is the most potentially life-threatening thing that can happen when I give a beta blocker or when I'm giving digoxin? So the next question is, well, in order to uh, practice safely and to not cause harm to the patient, how do I, the RN, assess for these life-threatening effects? How do I know if it's happening? How do I know if they have lost so much potassium or if their potassium is high? You know, how do I know without just looking at labs, what other things might be happening with the individual? And then most importantly, how do I prevent the life-threatening effects of these drugs? Um, do I need to take an apical pulse for at least one minute before I give a certain drug? If I don't do that, am I remiss? And I give that drug, could something happen to that patient? Um, what about assessing your inpatient and talking to your patient about muscle pain? and whether or not they're having any cramping or muscle pain before you give a certain drug and that you can actually cause a serious life-threatening adverse effect if you don't assess for that before the administration of a drug. So as we approach perfusion, 
and you look at this huge number of drugs to learn, it's so much, put it all in to the concept of perfusion to help you learn them. I hope this was helpful. Remember, go back to Patho if you need to. Use the videos with Jarvis in your online resources that come with your Elsevier resources um, and anything else that will help you really understand perfusion. And we are done. Thanks for listening.